swing and a miss. <laughs> Are we live? Are we live? I, I don't think we have. Do, did we get a gesture? Did we get a gesture? Did we get a gesture? A gesture. Oh, is it gesture hey, or ge jester? Jester would be somebody who wears a funny hat as in a court in olden days. <laughs> a, in olden days. In olden How days. How old are we talking? Uh, we're talking about kings and queens and things like that. Okay. Back in the jousting days. The jousting days. We're All not right. going to talk about jousting. Hello, everybody. Hello, everyone. Hello, we're Marissa. Hello, Kevin. <laughs> Kevin, <laughs> Kevin, I thought you were watching the show. The, you know what? Ones. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it through this whole <laughs> night because it's been quite an entertaining uh, uh, start to this whole thing. We are getting ready to start some watch parties. Yes, we are. How do I do it? Um, well, I'm going to explain it to everyone once we get more than two people on. <laughs> so... Uh, but but you go to go to share. Hold on, I, I don't even know if I'm up. Where, hold on. Hey, th there we Make are. Make sure your volume's off. Okay. Or you can just press the start a watch party option right there. Start. And then press start watch start. party. Yeah. That was easy. Yeah. Hello, Kevin. Hello, Marissa. I'm gonna turn this volume down. Sup, Jordan? Look, I'm here watching. I'm a faithful. <laughs> 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 Kevin, do you watch Jesus? <laughs> Is committed committedly Devo watch devoted. Do you follow Wh Jesus? What are you, what am I talk saying? What are you talking <laughs> about? I don't know. We've got these new microphones. Yes. And they're messing with me because you can't see, like, they're, my and mouth they're, anymore. And they're, and they're bigger. <laughs> they are bigger. And it feels like you should kind of da dance around them. It does. Like this. But it does. I, hopefully you can hear a little bit better. Yeah. Because we have the one and only Bruce Colbert up we in the do. booth again. Bruce Colbert, which he is now tied with Trevor for the same amount of times helping us produce yes. C3 Live. They awesome. They both produce three. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, we've... We don't want to share the news of next week yet, but we've got uh, some exciting stuff planned yes. for next week. Uh, um, am I supposed to press invite? No. I mean, uh, you can if you want to personally invite specific people, but they'll just start joining okay. as they see fit. Hello, that Michael. Michael Bonjour has joined the chat. Michael, how yeah. are you? Haven't seen you since basketball season. I hope life is good. They've been vacationing. Like they've been. Are going you kidding to, me? Yeah, they, I mean, I don't know if they I have still a, are. But I have a real problem with pictures. people vacationing that, that I, when I don't get to go. Well, when you go, their vacation ends up not being as good. That is correct. Of, yeah, it, fire There's a Brad Maddox curse yes. with vacation. Uh, I've been told I can't go on vacation anymore. Yes. Amy Renault, hello, hello. Welcome to the party. Yes. So, yeah, Michael, hope that your vacations were good. If, um, they if, were like surfing and uh, seriously and, uh, dolphin watching. I never liked Michael. Michael. <laughs> 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 you didn't invite us. <laughs> oh, well. Hey, if you're joining us and maybe one of the first times, um, we just kind of fool around for the first two or three minutes. Make sure everybody's on, and then we start what we're supposed to actually talk about. Yeah, C3 yeah. Thursdays Live. We are excited that you are here. This is one of Brad and myself's favorite thing to do <laughs> here at Crossbridge. So, uh, Only because we it. go out to eat afterwards. Exactly. <laughs> Only that's because not we true. get food. Yeah. Uh, Bruce, Barb, Shanda. Welcome, welcome. We're excited that you are here joining us. And yes. we got to say, so, we say excited too much. Oh, that's true. We are thrilled. We are, we are jubilated. Jub we are. <laughs> I don't think that word means what you say. <laughs> What's that from? <laughs> Probably not. That's uh, Princess Bride. Princess. Oh, that's such a good movie. We ought to do movies sometime. We should. I don't remember them, though. You know how people remember lines? You know, for movies and yeah. things. The only lines I can remember out of any movie are Monty Python and the Holy Grail. <laughs> <laughs> Not from Top Gun or anything like that? Uh, no. No? But, uh, I mean, I recognize some of them, but okay. if I regularly know them, it's basically from that movie and that movie only. So Monty I, Python. What's your favorite line from Monty Python? <laughs> It's just a flesh wound. <laughs> it's that. And the other one I like is, I'm not dead yet. <laughs> well, you're <What's> nearly dead. <laughs> I'm sorry. She's a witch. <laughs> How do you know she's a witch? Uh, what's the line <laughs> after that? <laughs> Bruce, what's the line after that? Your family's seen that movie like 50 times. Uh, I love that movie. Barb oh, well. Ash Okay. Um, hey, wait, I think we ought to. I don't remember how we wel welcome people. We should well, we get do the started. brain teaser first. The brain teaser. Brain teaser, and then we welcome. Okay, it's brain teaser time. It's brain teaser. It is brain teaser time. We are tied and zero to zero. Is, and I, honestly, I thought this was such a great one. <laughs> and then I started looking at it today and I thought, it's not as great as I okay. thought it was. But it's Am I okay. Am going to be able to get it? So, uh, probably not. <laughs> okay. But um, we're going to talk about fleas. Fleas. What do you know about fleas? I know that. My dog hates them. Yes, yeah. fleas are fleas are bad. Did you know there's cat fleas and dog fleas? Different varieties of fleas. I do now. But were you aware that fleas can jump? Yeah, they are prolific. 
How do you think of that word? <laughs> you stuck me for. I can't believe I that said. That was so aggressive. I can't, can't believe I said prolific. <laughs> that was, that's what you're excited about? It was. They are oh, prolific man. jumpers. Okay. And they can jump a lot. Okay. Okay. So if you, as a human, at six foot... Okay. So, no, jump. so none of the staff. <laughs> yeah, none of the staff. I'm six foot. Are you really? Well, I've shortened it. Anyway, <laughs> if you were six foot tall, how high could you jump if you could jump as much as a flea? Does that make any like sense? What's one that? jump? One jump. How high could you jump? If you were, if like you were equivalent a flea. Equivalent to being a flea. Equivalent to being a flea, and you just, if you just Am I jump. allowed to know, like, like, the percentage of a flea? No, because you could figure it out then. Well, I mean, I know you don't know that. I know you, 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 you're terrible at math, but, <laughs> but still. So how high? Uh, how high okay. could you jump? Um, 762 feet. That's a good guess. Well, I guess really high because I've always guessed low. Yeah, I'm, you're still low. I'm still low? Yes. Oh, my gosh. Uh, 900 feet. You're still low. 1,400 feet. Now you're high. 1,250 feet. 1,250 feet. 1,200. That's insane. Yeah. Um, eight. <clears throat> at least 80 times their, their, their height, and sometimes oh 200 times their height. 200 times. You could actually almost clear the Empire State Building by jumping. Oh, my God. And, and so what they did, they actually did an experiment. You can, you can Google this. <laughs> they actually made a scale model to a flea's height of the Empire State Building. Honest to goodness. And they filmed a flea jumping, and it made 90% of the Empire State Building. Oh 90%. There's some kind of thing in their legs, mechanical, something. They store up energy, and they can jump, and it's incredible. That's insane. Yeah. Well, if any of you are wanting to go flea jumping, <laughs> we'll be having lessons outside. I have no idea after why this. Hello, I even decided to do that one. Hello, but. Ryan. Welcome to the party. We're excited yes. you're here. Hey, Julio's here. Julio, glad to see you, man. Miss you, brother. We don't have water bottles. Oh, my gosh. Mm. That's going to be terrible. It is, but... Oh, well, it is 8.07. Let's I think do it. it's time to get started. Come on. Come on. Get this party started. All right. Um, I'm supposed to introduce this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sitting getting, in the camera I'm like, getting a little rusty here. Uh, hey, I'm Brad Maddox. I'm the outreach pastor here at Crossbridge Community Church, and this is my good friend, Jordan Chitwood. He is, I like how you do that every I time. Do, every time. <laughs> he is the young adults pastor young adults here pastor. at uh Crossbridge is C3. where we work. Yes, <laughs> you really do. Need I have water bottle. <laughs> I have not eaten for quite some time, oh, and so there you go. But uh, oh, man. man, we get to do this thing called C three Thursday, and we enjoy this immensely. Yeah, we are excited, we are thrilled, <laughs> we are jubilated that you have joined us because today we are wrapping up our three week mini series, just looking at the different core values that we have at Crossbridge. Right. As we've explained in the first two weeks, we don't have. Um, necessarily your your traditional statements of faith we don't have a document that says this is what you have to believe to attend Crossbridge and sign your name and to become a member here at the church uh, but we do have things that we value and right. we do have things that we do uh, that do define us describe us that uh, you know direct us and, and I would like to say that we still believe in all those other things we do <laughs> yeah we do we just don't uh, require that you sign away um, right you know your your statement of faith in order to attend here and stuff uh, but we do yeah we so we have these core values and so today we're talking about core value number four and core value number five and this is going to conclude our core values. and I love tonight. these two core values yeah these are powerful these are challenging to Very me challenging. core values and yeah. uh, and this whole core value thing that we've been doing, it's so important to us because we feel like that we can, in our own lives and other people's lives, if we are producing these kind of followers of Jesus, um, we're on the right track. Yeah. We know that we're, we're, you know, lives are being transformed and people are taking next steps. So that's, yeah. that's absolutely true. Exactly. So let's get started. Uh, core value number, number four. four. And, and it, it says, says this, this, that we will live a life of sacrifice. Living a God-centered, purpose-filled life will cost you something financially, emotionally, and with your time. But the rewards far outweigh the sacrifice. And I tell you, I, I think this is honestly, in our Western culture, something that is drastically missing. Yeah. That, that, that we're not teaching enough. Um, I think we soft-sell the gospel sometimes. Yeah. And, and, and that's why I love this. And... It can also be scary for people because I think a lot of people like to hide. Oh yeah, you know, and 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 go the easy route, yeah. and 
And mm -hmm. honestly, it's one of the things here at Crossbridge that, that's why we honestly push people is um, if, if you're going to follow Jesus the way that, that it, it looks to us that people followed him in the, in the first century, uh, it's going to end up, you're going to end up sacrificing something. Yeah, and when you consider, it, you know, that last point, when you consider the amounts of sacrifice that Jesus required from his followers. So let's, let's not even try to make a, a truth statement right now. Let's just consider what we see right. Jesus do, where he goes to his disciples, but then even some people that he gave an opportunity to follow him and chose to pursue the materialistic thing. So, so what he does is <laughs> Jesus goes to these people um, and says, hey, leave behind your career and follow me, all right? That's right. one of the things. Leave behind your possessions and follow me. That's the second thing. Leave behind your money and follow me. That's the third thing Jesus says. Leave behind your family yep. and follow me. That's the fourth thing that Jesus says. And so we've got all of these different things that can you imagine? So then what we've started to do, especially in our Western mindset, because in developing countries or in the Eastern culture, there is still a lot of that um, there's, there's not nearly as much materialistic, right. uh, struggle, I think, as we have over here in the Western culture. And so there are times when you've got people fasting. I mean, man, the, the Christian church in China that I was just reading about last year, uh, there were people that were on three weeks of fasting for Lent where the entire church, like their whole church community gave up food for three weeks just to give back and sacrifice to God. Right. Can we imagine that? No. Here. You know, it was almost, it, when you, actually, I love what you said about it, if we just look at the stories. And I think yeah. we miss that sometimes. We, we want to go to the scripture. We want to pull out the scripture, memorize the scripture. Nothing wrong with that, again. But if you look at the way they lived, if yeah. you look at what happened, it was almost like Jesus made it harder for people to follow him. It yeah. was almost like he was trying to make it difficult yeah. for people. Yeah. And, and I think so often, so so many times as, as we, you know, hey, come follow Jesus. It's, it's you know, make your life easier. And I think that's why when people <laughs> start following Jesus and life gets hard, they think, well, why in the world, why is this happening to me? Mm -hmm. You know, this is not what I signed up for. This is not what I was promised, mm -hmm. you know. And, and, and I think we see that more and more now be, if, because we've soft so sold that. Yeah, and I think there's actually, I think there's two ways that individuals look at it. Um, or, or pastors or churches will preach is one is a eternity eternity centered uh, lifestyle where they place so much emphasis on what's to come the eternity right. and then don't place enough emphasis on what is going on now our suffering the trials the requirements right. the the sacrifice but then the flip I think is just as bad where we put too much emphasis on the this side of eternity the life the the finite um uh you know maybe the suffering we put so much into uh, woe me like what's going on all of the world is out to get me right. there's all of this and then don't focus on the glory that is to be revealed in us later and i think that's the battle that paul is writing about in chapter eight of romans where he is saying hey it's it can't be either or it has to be both but you're not going to be able to experience both unless it's a hundred percent one and a hundred percent the other at the same time right I think the other thing we see is when people start following Jesus, and, and this is not one of those things that, oh, I've got to just give up everything. I think it, it, it's part of the, the, the walk is that yeah. I have found that, that Jesus has asked me <laughs> to sacrifice more and more and more, as, you know, and, and especially different areas of your life. And all of us have different areas of our life that there are certain things that we don't want to sacrifice. Yeah. For me, and, and everybody that's been around Crossbridge for a while has heard me speak from the stage about finances. You know, yeah. I didn't trust God with finances for so long. And it was one of those areas that I had to learn to say, okay, God, this is yours. My time was nothing. You know, I, could, I would volunteer and volunteer and volunteer, and, and that, was, that was easy for me. I wasn't sacrificing anything. It was very easy. But when it came yeah. to actually writing the check, yeah. uh, that's when it started becoming, okay, this is serious stuff. Yeah. And God really had to walk me through that. Other people, it's the opposite. Yeah. They can write the big checks. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, don't, we don't have any issue with that. <laughs> but but yet they you know their time is precious to them, so they don't want to yeah. do they they, they don't want to they don't want to serve they don't want to do and so if you're going to sincerely follow Jesus, there's going to be a cost to it, and and we believe that's not only biblical but we see it in in everybody that actually follows Jesus. And if you watch anybody who is sincerely and effectively and have have that peace and joy that's following Jesus, you just ask them. 
Yeah. Where yeah. they got that from. It was exactly. through a time of sacrifice. Yeah. And, man, there's going to be so much good stuff tonight. We may go just a little <laughs> bit longer tonight because these are, are filled you, with so much stuff. You're, you're, there's you're, one more. One more. I just want to warn our, our crowd, okay. you know, our viewers and stuff. Um, we were actually just talking, before we get to the verse that, you know, helps us define this value, we were talking, me and you in the car, I don't know, two weeks ago maybe how – you know, sometimes we do a five-minute devotion in the morning, and then we feel good about ourselves. <laughs> yeah. You know, where we do our, our, our time alone with God, we get it out of the way in the morning, um, and, and it's one of those devotionals on version, which, you know, the devotionals are fantastic. I love them. Right. Um, but we, we spend that five, tim- five minutes with God, and we're like, whew, all right, we're pat good. Our, pat ourselves you know, on the back, yeah, pat ourselves here we on go. The back. And, and I, after that conversation with you, I realized that I was not sacrificing enough of my time right. with God. And I think that's also the culture that, yeah, five minutes is a great step to take. But as you hit on, after that becomes a routine, then what we want to do is challenge you to take, these words are going to come up often, a next step. Right, and, and it goes back to what you've been saying the last few weeks is that once you get to a point of comfort, c- comfortableness, yeah, I was going to say comfortability, I can't say that. Comfortability. But you get to the point where, where all of a sudden you realize I'm at a comfort level in my life in this area. Yeah. I would start asking myself, how can I stretch myself? Yeah. What it, can God take me to a next step? Yeah. Is there something else? No matter, again, whether it's your time, whether it's your finances, whether it's your devotional time, you name it. Yeah, exactly. And so here's the verse, of one, of, one of the many passages, but this passage, I think, really defines this core value for us. And it comes from Matthew chapter 16, verse 24 through 26, a conversation that Jesus has with his disciples. And Jesus says this, then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? And there's one thing that I think we skip over with this. And this is why Jesus described this. For many things that we're going to break down. But one is Jesus uses a cross reference very specifically. And that was, that was kind of a pun. He uses a cross as a reference. Not right. Also a cross reference. Okay? <laughs> he uses a cross as a reference. And this is why. Okay? Um, telling his disciples that every single day you have to pick up your cross. In their culture, this again, this doesn't make sense to us. Right. In their culture where crucifixion was the most deadly way to die by cross, um, painter, p- artists, individuals that were painters at the time and authors actually, because the cross was so gruesome, refused to draw and write any images of the cross until around 300 AD, 300 to 400 AD after Constantine was around to guarantee that everyone that could have experienced the cross or had family members that experienced the cross in their line of remembering had died so that it wouldn't affect them. So Jesus is using this and saying, hey, anyone that picks up their cross, picks up the most difficult, most tiring, most painful, most challenging part of their life and carries it daily with them as a sacrifice for God, that is what it'll take to be my disciple. Makes you want to follow, doesn't it? Exactly. Doesn't that, <laughs> w- would that be your pitch? Yeah, uh, to exactly. Like influence individuals? And, and I understand why we've done that for, for decades. I can remember back, in, you know, when, when I started following Jesus, it, it was, it was, this is just going to make your life better. Yeah. You know, come forward and, and say the prayer. And, and, and I get that. But I'm telling you, until you experience it and, and until you understand, I think we've led a lot of people down a path that, you know what? We, we've done them a disservice. Yeah, and it, it starts with us, too. I mean, I you know, there's there's definitely ways at Crossbridge, even from, from leadership or from our sermons, that we can push this more. And that's something in the right. last couple months, that's why we started pushing it more, because we realized, hey, um, are we too comfortable right. here as a church? And so that's why we did Revolution. That's why we did Aftermath. And, and, what, you, did and what you find is... is, is people who understand that and can say hey yeah i do truly want to follow jesus and and you struggle with it all the time it doesn't mean that oh everything's going to be all gloom and doom yeah but when you find people who are are understand that they are so much more ready to to handle the stuff that comes at them yeah that tough stuff that comes at them exactly and and they can they can work through it and they come out on this other side even stronger than what they were before yeah instead of being freaked out of oh all of a sudden man here i am 
Exactly. I yeah. wasn't expecting this. Yeah. I thought, you know, I just lost my job. Yeah. I just lost my marriage. My kids are all going astray. I thought if I follow this Jesus, everything's going to be fine. Yeah, exactly. And that's why I think Jesus and Paul, Paul specific in a lot of his letters, is writing so much. A lot of the issues, uh, I was listening to a podcast today, a lot of the issues um, are where we don't recognize that the opposite of love is selfishness. Mm. And this pastor made that, like, we often think the opposite of love is hate, right. but it, it really is selfishness. Like, what, what can benefit me? What is it about me? What is my, you know, because God calls us to love and be humble. And so the opposite is selfish. And often our relationship with God, it's, okay, how can I get around this pain or this trial or, or how can I just focus on, you know, it, it's really about fine-tuning our focus. And we start praying that just get me out of this, God. Yeah. Instead of what can I learn from this? Where do you want to stretch me? Yeah. Beautiful segue to core value number exactly. five. Exactly. Core value number five reads this. Uh, we will live an others-focused life. When we have to choose, we will put the needs of people who do not have a relationship with God before our own. The value of a transformed life is worth more than our own desires. desires. Drop the mic. <laughs> that, that hurts. That's painful. That is, yeah. And, and that is something here that um, the natural tendency of any church is to move inwards. Yep. It is it's just a natural tendency of any organization, any church, I don't care where, where it is. Human being, too. Exactly, is that it becomes, starts becoming about me. What yeah. do I like? What do I enjoy? How, again, we move towards comfortable. There are some areas of our lives that, that you know, we all want to be comfortable. Yeah. But this is one area that we've got to understand that, man, it's not about us yeah. anymore. Yeah. And, and so I love this. And this is one thing that we actually talk in. We kind of do like a newcomer's class uh, called Link. And one of the things that we talk about is exactly this, is that if we have a decision to make, whether something we're going to do, something we're going to change, if it is for the benefit of the ch church in itself or someone else who is far from God, we will always choose the others who are far from God. Mm -hmm. We will make ourselves intentionally uncomfortable, yeah. intentionally not getting what we want. What, you know, and, and it, I don't think this happens as much anymore, but it was you know, a decade or maybe two decades ago, the music thing. The whole music thing was all, oh, you know, yeah. there was this big arguments in, in churches and things about moving to this, all this contemporary stuff and, and what have you. But it's about others. Yeah. Now, when you guys start wanting to rap all the time, I'm going <laughs> to. Brad. I, I'm going to retire. <laughs> Brad. <laughs> yeah, but it's the same idea. It is exactly the same idea. Yeah. Exactly the same yeah. idea. And we've made, I mean, with C3 Sports, um, a big reason for us wanting to be out here or, or, or trying to figure out like how to get c3 sports out here um is so that we can invite the community not necessarily i mean part of it is so that they can see where we function how we function but so that we are able to then invest as many relationships into those into those people so a lot of our, our resources a lot of our energy a lot a lot of our budget a lot of what we do is we see c3 sports provides the others in our life for right. us and we and we look at that in in every one of our ministries no matter where yeah, from, from exactly. children's to youth to adult to whatever um is we have got to stay focused on others. Yeah. And again, it's just a natural tendency. And we talk about that almost every week in All some the time. kind of sermon. Yeah. And especially in the last nine months. Yes. Like, yeah. Exactly. Last year, that has been our focus. Right. Exactly. L let me read uh, uh, the scripture that we kind of base this on and we'll break it down a little bit. It's actually in Luke chapter 10. It's actually verses 25 through 37. L long verse. <laughs> One day, an expert in religious law stood up to test Jesus by asking him this question. Teacher, what should I do <laughs> to inherit eternal life? Jesus replied, what does the law of Moses say? How do you read it? I love that question. Yeah. That he actually asked that question. We're not going there, are we? Okay, that's <laughs> not what we're talking about. The man answered, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Right, Jesus told him, do this and you will live. The man wanted to justify his action, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied with a story, and he goes into the story that, that most of us know very well. A Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho, and he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and left him half dead beside the road. By chance, a priest came along, but when he saw the man lying there, he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. 
A temple assistant walked over and looked at him lying there, but he also passed by on the other side. I'm reading this fast because it's a lot. Yeah, if I just good. read it, I'd be done by now. <laughs> a temple okay, I already said that. Then a despised Samaritan came along, and when he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn where he took care of him. The next day he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, telling him, Take care of this man. If his bill runs higher than this, I'll pay you the next time I'm here. Now, which of these three would you say was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by the bandits? Jesus asked. The man replied, the one who showed him mercy. Then Jesus said, yes, now go and do the same. Wow. <laughs> you ready to break this down? <laughs> I don't think we can. <laughs> I know. This one is probably one of my favorite parables that Jesus shares. Yeah, and and the several things... <laughs> We've actually talked a lot about some of these things this last last service. Yeah. And I tell you, it can be challenging. Um, asking the question. Have you noticed how Jesus always asks the question? Pushing yeah. someone who's asking a question, instead of staying in your little box that you think you know the answer, he pushes them outside. Yep. And this is totally outside what the religious leaders would have said. Yeah. It would have been perfectly fine for the religious leaders, for that priest and for the, the attendant to walk by this man. It would have been perfectly justified yeah. by the Old Covenant. Yeah, by the Levitical law. Absolutely. Yeah, they were, unclean, they were, they were, yeah. Yeah, and so no problem. Yeah. yeah. That's what the law says. We can do that. Yep. It's a piece of cake. But Jesus is pushing this guy to step outside of what, what he's thinking, and it all goes back to what the new covenant is going to be about loving your neighbor, no matter who it is. Yeah, exactly. And this is, I mean, this we're is gonna what. We're going to preach, aren't we here? I know. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. This is one of my favorite stories. But when you understand the rich history, okay, so you've got this individual who comes to Jesus um, asking about the, the, the law. Like, what law should I follow, okay? Yes. Um, and then he references a story that involves Jesus to respond, shares a story of a, a Jew and a Samaritan. Okay, where the Jews and the Samaritans hated each other, despised we, each we other. We can't stress that enough. Where it is like us with an, a nation that we're at war with, right? Like that is how bad the the uh, situation was. But in order for um, those communities to trade with other areas, they had to go down this road down Jericho. Okay, so uh, Jericho, Jerusalem. You know, yeah. To get to trade with Jerusalem, they had to go down this path. Okay. And, and cross through some of the territory. And so this was an extremely deadly, dangerous journey where this individual was beaten, robbed, almost killed. Right. Okay? So then Jesus starts referencing uh, 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 what he says first. A temple priest comes first. Right. Or, yeah. Okay? So a temple assistant who would have known the Levitical law where this man is unclean. I can't help this man because he's unclean. Right. Okay. That's old covenant. I, if I yeah. if I if I touch him, I'm ceremonially unclean. Exactly. And then I'll be unclean for I mean either a day or six days, sixty six days. You know, there's there's X uh, amount of days depending right. on how many right. how bad it is. But he's like, you know what? Because I'm more concerned about my inner and myself. He keeps walking. Okay. Right. Then we have the second person does the same thing, and they're not exactly sure. Uh, you know, historian scholars have studied why does the second person pass up? Could be for the same reason of the Levitical law. Uh, could have been for safety. I don't know. Have you heard? Have I have you not. Done it? Yeah. No. They, from what I've studied, they're not exactly sure why the second person passes up. Um, but what we know then about um, this Samaritan person who comes to help the Jew, okay, is the Samaritan person risks his safety, okay, risks his reputation, risks his family safety, risks his job, risks his life, and his finances. He basically sacrifices. Sacrifice, yeah, <laughs> core value number four. Okay? Yeah, exactly. Takes this person into town where everyone would see him right. associating with a Jew and says, I will pay whatever it takes and then some right. to love this person. Yeah. And then what is, repeat what Jesus says at the end. Yes, now go and do the same. Go and do the same. And that's why we have been just beating the drum. Love, love, love. Yeah. Everyone. Exactly. Yeah. And it's just, I, I, it's, it's overwhelming at times. Yeah. And, and, and I think it's what the world is waiting for us to do. Yeah. They're looking for the church, the people who are following Jesus, is, is to set the example. Yeah. Yeah. And it's the famous quote, the, the world knows too often what the church is against, 
but doesn't know what we're for. Right. Doesn't know who we're for. Exactly. And um, it can be really challenging. Yeah. In this culture. And 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 we could obviously go weeks after week after week after this. Yeah. And and so it's just it's it's I tell you it and it makes me uncomfortable. Um, the it's intimidating. It it is. Yeah. And and especially uh, you know if you've grown up with with some of these understandings of. of we have groups of people just like the Samaritans and the Jews that we Absolutely. look at. And, and we are called to love them. I yeah. think that's exactly what Jesus is saying here. Exactly. Yeah. Hey, well, that is core value number <laughs> four and five. We, right stir, at eight, we stir the pot. We did stir the we pot. We stir the pot and just let it go. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> hey, well, we have been, we have thoroughly enjoyed these last couple of weeks because we were talking, we like, we've shared the core values here and there from time to right. time in different sermons and stuff, but we've never done an actual study right. on why we believe what we believe. Yeah. And so, yeah. And, and it's, it, again, it's one of those things that it, it checks me. To, 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 I can look at that list and say, okay, is it, are these showing up in my life? Yeah, yeah. exactly. So good yeah. stuff. So good stuff. that was our mini series, three weeks where we spent looking at the core values. If you miss any of those, I challenge you to go back and watch week one and week two, the past two weeks. Uh, we are looking forward to next Thursday. Like we shared at the beginning of launching this, every fourth week, we're going to do something different than what we've been doing right. previously. So four weeks ago, we did an Ask Us Anything where we invited the man, the myth, the legend, Bruce Colbert himself, to come and answer some questions that the church has asked. Next week, we're going to do something a little bit different. You're going to want to be here for it, okay? We are doing C3 Jeopardy. Yes, we okay? are. C3 Jeopardy, where we're going to do something a little bit more laid back, more fun. We're inviting Trevor Grimaud, our youth pastor, <laughs> to join us on stage. He's going to crush us. Yes. And then Michaela Hansen is interning with us over the summer. And, and she's sh she's going to be Michaela Quebec. Yep. Mi <laughs> <laughs> it's not Tribec, <laughs> Trebek. Quebec. Exactly. Yeah, because, yeah, it's like, never mind. Yeah, okay. Well, her degree is in communications, and so this is going to be a fun opportunity. She's going to be our game show host, and it is going to be Bible trivia amongst the <laughs> pastors to see how well do the pastors know. Oh, I'm going to fail the B -I -B -L -E. so bad. B L E. So we are excited. That is next Thursday, C3 Jeopardy. Um, it's going to be fun, it's going to be entertaining, just an enjoyable night. Um, but we are excited about that. And, and then, do you want to share? Unless you got something what? else to share. I was what? gonna say our, if you want to promote our new series starting on Sunday as well. Yes, we are starting a brand new series uh, called Paper Tigers. Paper Tigers. And explain to them what Paper Tigers actually stands for. Yeah, so Paper Tigers is a phrase that was coined to describe um, paperless, uh, less intimate, uh, real this fears is why I in our life. Yeah, <laughs> real fears in our life, real things that we are intimidated by. Um, anxieties, depression, fear, different losses, different sufferings. But when you actually look at them, they don't have any power. There's no power. There's no that. physical power. There's no weight there. It is just something that is still, it, it, and, and it's still hard. It's still challenging. It's still intimidating. But when you look at the paper tiger, when you look at what it is, it has no power exactly. over you. Exactly. So Unless you give it power. Anxiety, fear, that kind of stuff. That's what yep. we're going to be talking about tackling over the next four weeks. It's going to be a great, great series. series. Yeah. So this Sunday, 9 and 1030, Bruce is kicking off the series. I'll be preaching next week, and then we got Brad in two weeks. We are really excited about it. Uh, we're not. Well, we are excited. We are. We're jubilated we're, by we're it. Thrilled. <laughs> we're thrilled. We're thrilled. We're looking a, forward we're gonna to it. We're going to get a thesaurus out. It's time for us to go. we got to go. Exactly. Hey, <laughs> thanks for joining us. See ya. See you next week. Bye. <laughs> 833.